from downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current. WQPX invites you to join us as we explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Now, let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Welcome to Northeast Current. I'm your host today, Bernie Mayapolsky. I'm here on the beautiful Lackawanna Heritage Trail with Owen Warsbitt. We're going to talk to you today about their bike share program. So come on and join us. It was a great ride, huh, Owen? Yeah, not too bad. That's great. Thank you very much, and thanks for joining us today. No problem. Pleasure to be here. Very good. It's a beautiful day today in Northeast Pennsylvania. And I think the people from Northeast Pennsylvania should be really happy that we have this trail here. And a new aspect, a new um, a part of the trail and all over Scranton is Bike Scranton, which is a bike share. So um, could you give us a little bit of information, like how did, how did this get started and things like that? We started the bike share program last year in 2015. And it originally started really uh, as an inform is a program that we were awarded a grant from the Northeast Pennsylvania Healthcare Foundation. And that allowed us to go out and purchase some of the bikes. And the idea was that it would be free and open to really anybody. As long as you had a valid photo ID uh, and you were over 18 years of age, we were uh, open to letting anybody try it out. Okay, so, so I could come to the trail and then I could I rent a bike. It's, I don't rent it. It's for free. It's right? all, it's all it's for free. It's open to anybody that's, do I have to be a resident of Lackawanna County or anything like that? No, and we're actually finding more and more people from out of the area are oh, using really? the bikes more because a lot of the people from the area already have bikes. Sure, so. they have a bike. Yeah. So like you come here and so there's, um, it's, is it just at the trail where I can get a bike? No, we have four different locations. Uh, you can come to the LHVA offices which are located right off the trail on 7th Avenue, uh, the Hilton Hotel in downtown Scranton, at the University of Scranton at the Weinberg Library, and also Cedar Bike and Paddle over on Pittston Avenue and Southside. Wow, so I mean, so you just, uh, you have to be over 18. You're right. And you have to have a photo ID. Mm -hmm. And then you give, I guess it's first come, first serve? Yes, uh, it, it's first come, first serve. Some locations have more bikes than others. At our office here on the trail, we have, we have five bikes that we loan out. Uh, the Hilton and the University of Scranton have about eight bikes each, so. Uh, each site has a different amount of bikes, and it is a first-come, first-served basis. I see. And how many bikes are there all together? It's 40 bikes. Oh, 40 all bikes. All said and told. Yeah, there's about 40 bikes. Uh, they're not all in circulation at the moment. We do have a couple extra bikes that we're, we uh, hold back in storage in case one goes down. I see. Or also trying to bring another location online. So if we do that, then we'll have oh. five locations. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do I, can I keep the bike like for as long as I want? How does it work? Do I take it home with me, use it for a month? Oh. You, you can uh, check it out and then you have to return it to that lo the same location, oh, the before, same location before the end of the day. Okay. Uh, each location's hours uh, differ and we ask you to go to the bikescranton.com website to check out uh, the location times and dates that they're available. Uh, and with, that's all we ask, is that you bring it back to the location bring it by back the end in of the good night. condition. Right. We will okay. check the bike over to make sure that there's no issues with it. And, yeah. Uh, and you also have to return the helmet and the bike lock. And, uh, and the helmet is included too? Yes. Right. Uh, you, when, when we loan out the bike, we make sure that we give you a helmet wow. and a lock. So uh, if you want to take the bike to a restaurant downtown, and you, you can lock it up out, outside of the restaurant, and that's no problem. So do you encourage people to use it for like shopping and going out for the day, things like that? Sure. Not just for riding on the trail? Yeah, we encourage people to really ride all over uh, Scranton. Oh. It's not only for the trail, uh, although the, that's what we primarily see people doing with them. Yeah. Especially people who haven't been on a bike in a, in a while. Uh, but it, 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 it does uh, lend itself to shopping around downtown yeah. a little easier. Especially if you, you're not familiar with the city yeah. and you kind of want to get around a little quicker, uh, you just hop on a bike and I think it's fantastic. Around. I got to tell you, when I go to a city, I, you know, I love to take a bike, to ride a bike. Um, and well, years ago, in, in Barcelona, they have a bike share, mm -hmm. and they have them everywhere. I mean, of course, it's a big city. And I think that was one of the, you know, I remember back then I thought, boy, that'd be cool if you had that in Scranton. <laughs> you know, they have the, like, in the, how it is in New York, you get on the bike and you, but there you have to be a resident of Barcelona. Tourists couldn't use the bikes. Mm -hmm. So I had to rent a bike. But you really get to see a, a, a place a city when you have a bike and I, I think you can get around faster because you don't have to sure. park you don't have to fight one-way traffic mm -hmm. here and there you can go you know wherever you want so 
I mean, I'm just lucky to say I've I've biked Philadelphia, Washington, New York, Barcelona, yep. Amsterdam. You know, a lot of cities. It's uh, definitely one of the one of the things I like about it. Is you could bike it, yeah. bike it into downtown, and then you right. just lock it up. You don't have to worry about parking. Right. So. Now you still can't drink and bike. Right. It's still a thing. <laughs> in, in most of the cities, you do have to pay to sure, rent them. Right. There's very few free bike share programs out there. Right. And uh, through the through the grant we got, we were able to make it free and open to really anybody. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then can you you can get to this trail from downtown oh, fairly sure. easily, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not too difficult to get to the trail. Okay. And it's not, you know, it's we, we have a nice, fun city, but it's not, you know, that it's the traffic is overwhelming. Right. <laughs> so it's nice to drive a, ride a bike around. So the bikes are all brand new, right? What kind of bikes are they? Uh, we have a couple different styles. Uh, we do have men's bikes and women's bikes available. Uh, we have the hybrid bikes, which aren't quite a mountain bike, but they're not quite a road bike. I see. Uh, and those, they have a little skinnier tires. They're also 21 speed. Uh, okay. So that, 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 that's a pretty good feature. The other style of bike that we have is a cruiser bike, and that's your typical beach cruiser where you sit right. back a little bit more. Those are only seven speeds, so I wouldn't want to try to go up like Linden Street today. I see, right. Those are better it. for the trail. Right, those are good Cruising for Cruising along the trail. Right, right. I mean, the trail looks like you just paved it, too. The trail looks beautiful. Yeah, we just finished a big construction project here yeah. in the city. Uh, we resurfaced a little over a mile of the section of trail, uh, and that was that finished up back in May. So it was... Wow. Uh, I was... Uh, that was a big project, yeah. and, it, and they did it pretty quickly. Uh, so now a lot more people are out riding the bikes on the trail because of this, the new surface and everything. So I mean, it's a really it is a gem that we have here for Northeast yeah. Pennsylvania residents and and guests too, obviously. So yeah. are people taking advantage of the program? I mean, what's the usage? Yeah, we've uh, we only really have a lot of data from last year that we put together, but we had the program running for a couple months last year. We had about 700 people take advantage okay, of it. Okay, yeah. Um, most of that, once again, is from the, the two locations in downtown, the Hilton and the University of Scranton. And believe it or not, the demographic that we're seeing most of the people are uh, like people in their late 20s, early 30s. Uh, there's more females taking the bikes than males. Uh, and a lot of them are from uh, out of the area, as I mentioned. From out of the yeah. area, because they don't have a bike. Right. I'll tell you, though, if you're from the area even, and you know, I know people that say, I, I, for example, I had a friend who put her bike in her car and drove to the trail. Mm -hmm. Well, she could just come here and get a bike. Right. And ride, so instead of having to do that. Yeah, that, that's something that uh, we, we've been encouraging people to stop by our office and pick up the bikes, because we're yeah. already on the trail, so rather than have to lug your bike right, in. Right, you lug your bike over, you yep. just use that, use the bike. And so, I mean, have you found that you run out of bikes a lot, or right as of right now, it's still pretty, is there a pretty good chance you'll get one? Yeah, as of right now, there's still a pretty good chance you're going to get one. Uh, typically in the mornings, we see more people taking them out, especially of our, at our office. Um, but yeah, you, you're pretty much always going to be able to get a bite. There's, there's for no, now, for until now, it gets, yeah. right, until it gets more and more busy. Uh, now, could kids, can kids ride the bikes too? No, unfortunately, right now, uh, the way that we have the program set up, you have to be 18 or older. Okay. Um, can you put a kid on your bike? It's just for adults. Right uh, it's just for adults Got right it. now. That's understandable. It's something if an adult. Had in the, if you want to take your kids for a bike ride, but you don't personally have a bike, you could bring That's the kids' a great bikes idea, down the trail. Because a lot of times then, kids have a bike, but then you right. don't have a bike because maybe you don't use a bike that often. Sure. If you if you right. have like a seven or eight year old that wants to go for sure. a bike ride on the trail, but you don't right. have a bike, stop in and check one out. Right. So that's, a, that's right. an opportunity for you. And you could check it out online where the um, the locations are and where the um, the hours. And we'll put that up on the screen. So you get spikescranton.com? Bikescranton.com. And we always encourage you to do that because each location has uh, different hours of operation. Uh, for instance, the, uh, the offices over here at LHVA are only open really during office hours. But the Hilton and the University of Scranton are open uh, all daylight hours. So uh, it, we really do encourage you to stop by the website before you are heading out on, uh, for a ride. So. so I understand there's been some events like you have like a bike tour, guided bike tours, that kind of thing? Yes, uh, we, we, this spring we tried doing guided bike tours along the trail, utilizing the bikes at each of the locations. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we did four of them. Uh, the last one was actually this past Sunday. We had about eight people show up. Okay. Uh, and the goal of that is really just to get people a little more familiar with the trail. Because people are constantly hearing about it sure, now. Sure, right. It's getting a lot of attention. But not everybody's always really familiar with how, how you navigate the trail because right. it's not always one continuous stretch like you see through here. Sometimes you have to go on city streets, and you, uh, well, for instance, in Scranton, when you go up on the levee, there's at Albright Avenue, you got to cross over the levee and actually sure, continue up there. Mean, so, yeah. the, the, getting people out in, actually on the trail, uh, d through a guided bike ride is really. I think it's a, a great, great way idea. to get. And you know, you'll get a couple at a time, but yeah. you do, I mean, I really recommend you do the do the guided tour if you hear there's one coming mm -hmm. up. 
um, to try it out. But honestly, like you said on the levee, um, I rode that levee a lot last year. Mm -hmm. I take my bike, I come right from my house or, or from mm -hmm. my office, get right up on the trail, right, right along there. It's very cool. There's trees over it. It's mm -hmm. very peaceful. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it's it's flat. Mm -hmm. And then you come on the trail, you can go really far. You can go all the way oh, down yeah. to Taylor. Sure. Uh, and, yeah. and the goal is to get more people out, get them active. Uh, and overall, uh, we've been seeing a lot of repeat customers. So there, there's a bunch of people that have been utilizing the bikes this year that came there they started last year they they, may, they might not have had a bike and they started riding right and then they've gone on to buy their own bike so we've right. been seeing them on the trail sure, right. too because they actually got started with the program and they really liked it uh, so we just finished up those guided bike rides on sunday but we're going to be uh, probably promoting some more towards the end of the summer we're going to take take the month of july off because it'll be could be too hot so we'll be looking yeah. at august and september to start those up again yeah and at the end of september we have the annual heritage explorer bike ride which takes people it starts up in mellow yes. park well yes. lakely borough park yes and you can ride 22 miles north on the trail all the yes. way up to uniontale and I've that's going to that. be that's a great that's a great event yeah that's going to be on september 25th and uh we we, mind. we moved the date from june to september because we wanted to attract more and more people uh, in June, we were seeing that a lot of people were going on vacation. It was right. getting a little harder. Sometimes to it find might be too hot on some days. Right. I know some of the days were hot. So now we're looking at the at the end of September. Uh, the hopefully we'll have some good fall foliage. Yeah. We'll, maybe we'll be able to draw some more people in from out of the area to, okay. to go on that ride. So uh, that, we're 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 looking to do that once again on September 25th, and that's still starting in the same place uh, up there, Blakely Borough Park, and that will be going north on the trail. So that, is this the first year that it's in the fall? Yes, this oh, is the first great. year it's in okay. the fall. We, this is going to be the seventh annual, so we did six in June, and this will be the first one we're trying in right. September. Yeah, I remember taking my little Gracie when she was little. <laughs> we're on the trail. Right. So that's great. Well, so um, good people of Northeast Pennsylvania, you have a real, real gem here. You know, all these other cities have trails that people like to enjoy. I mean, people are using it, but if, if you haven't been here, if you haven't checked it out, definitely come and check it out. And you could have a free bike. I mean, where can you get that? It's a, you know, not even a rent, a bike and a helmet, a brand new bike. I, I could test for myself. It's really, um, it's a really good bike to ride. So, yeah. so maybe we'll ride back. Sure. Yeah. All right. Sounds well, thanks good. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thank All you. Right. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm Ben Affleck. The only thing better than playing a hero in the movies is being a hero in real life. Like the 50,000 veterans who returned from Iraq and Afghanistan with devastating injuries. They are true heroes, and they're why I'm proud to support Paralyzed Veterans of America. They make sure veterans with spinal cord injuries get the care and support they need at no cost to them. To learn more, visit pva.org. That's pva.org. I have this really cool um, uh, event that's coming up. I'm going to read it to you all because I, I know about it, but I just got it here. So um, this is from the Greenhouse Project, the greenhouse that's located in uh, Neog. So the Greenhouse project is, project is pleased to announce the Secret Garden Tour, which is a tour of Scranton's gardens. It's a fundraiser on Saturday, June 25th from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. That's rain or shine. So the tour features 12 beautiful and unique gardens located in the historic hill section of Scranton. Musical performances will be offered at several of the garden locations throughout the event, and visitors can tra travel by trolley, by foot, or by car. So advanced ticket sales are $15 per person and are available at three locations um, online at uh, www.scrantongreenhouse.org. Duffy Accessories on 218 Linden Street in downtown Scranton, or the Greenhouse Project itself on 200 Arthur Avenue in Scranton. That's right up by Geisinger Hospital at Neog Park. Um, so comfortable, comfortable walking shoes are recommended. Some of the pros, properties may be physically challenging for some people. Homeowners and volunteers will be stationed in each garden to share their knowledge, methods, ideas, and materials used to create their garden. Of special interest, the Greenhouse Project will be hosting their perennial plant sale during the event 
at their Naog location from 11 to 3, so be sure to swing by and pick up a few additional plants and flowers for your own garden. Um, day of Tour tickets and maps will be available at the start of the Secret Garden Tour at the Greenhouse Project at the 12, at 12, oh, I'm sorry, and at 1214 Myrtle Street until 2 p.m., and the cost is $20 per person, so it's 15 before 20 the day of. Tour participants must pick up maps at the Greenhouse Project or at the Myrtle Street location. For additional information about the 2016 Secret Garden Tour or to purchase your tickets, you can call 570-344-9186 or you can contact them at info at scrantongreenhouse.org. I'm, I'm hoping I can make it. I'm looking forward to it. Your host is also a gardener. So thank you and we'll be right back. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Good morning and welcome to Northeast Current. My name is Art Walsh and I am your guest host this morning. And we're here to interview Katie Priestash and Casey Thomas who are the stars of the Sam Shepard play, Fool for Love, here at Providence Playhouse, Actors Circle in Scranton, this Friday and Saturday evening and Sunday matinee. And we want to thank you for tuning in. And now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Fool for Love, which is a play being produced by 411 Studio, I believe, directed by Lou Bizignani. I have to admit that I've had the pleasure, actually the pleasure of working with these two young people before, never together. Uh, we were in one production together, though. Yeah, we oh, were, short as a place. matter of fact. And I, when we were watching it together maybe a week or two ago, and I saw you, I was like, there you are. Because I, well, I didn't remember a lot of it. It was a long, long time ago. So there were a lot of faces I wasn't expecting Oh, that to thing, see. yeah. Yep. Right. I was talking about the short plays when you guys did uh, Roquefort, but it, in any oh, event, oh, which was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I firmly believe that the chemistry you displayed in that was the reason that this came about. I think it was a lot of fun, though. That yeah. was yeah. still one of my favorite things. That oh, it's so much fun, yeah. and we've gotten a lot of mileage out of it. We've I believe it. Lots yeah. of other places Several too. Several times. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. See, the things you learn. Okay, well, let's get on to uh, some Sam Shepard here. Uh, would you like to, Casey, let me start with you. Um, how did this come about that uh, you two got together to do this and involved Louis or vice versa? I think it was after Roquefort, um, which was written by a local playwright. And Kate and I performed Ted LaRusso. It, yeah, Ted LaRusso, mm -hmm. who I, I love and adore. But Louis had been wanting to do this show for a long time. He just didn't know where it would fit or who would allow him to do it. So I think after he saw Kate and I in, in that short uh, play, he figured it would work between the two of us, and then it became an independent venture. We were going to find a place and, and you know, get the rights ourselves and, and uh, just put it on wherever we could. And that's how it came about. And that brings us, did you bounce anywhere else before you came here? We were going to go to AFA Gallery in, in downtown Scranton, but then logistically speaking, with a stage and lights already being at Providence Playhouse, we sort of decided to, to do it here to to make things a little easier. All right. Well, as an aside, uh, this is also kind of a venture to introduce the world uh, to a, a facility here that can be used by other people. Right. I think Actors Circle would love sure. to have people come in and do plays periodically, yeah, pay them a little rent. Mm -hmm. Rent it out and absolutely. You know, take, take things into your own hands, which is also nice sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Shepard wrote this here play here. <clears throat> Uh, anything you would like to say about it? Uh, maybe to intrigue uh, someone sitting out there in 6 o'clock in the morning TV land? Well, in past interviews that we've done, we've sort of been trying to keep it a little bit mysterious and not give away a, a lot of the plot points. But, you know, it, it really comes down to a lover's quarrel um, that has some dark elements to it that come to light later on in, in the show. And that's about as far as I've been able to get. Well, let's go, let's go back to, then from the point of view of somebody who has, I have directed Sam Shepard in the past. I, uh, I directed True West. Right. And Sam Shepard's dialogue. Uh, uh, I love directing Shepard because, uh, well, I, I have this thing about uh, directing myself is I, I don't want people to feel like they're sitting in a theater watching a play. 
you know, and Shepard writes the kind of stuff where you're actually invited into people's lives because the dialogue is difficult. But it's the kind that it's the kind of dialogue that is that people have when they're talking to each other and not speaking so that someone else could understand or overhear what they're saying. Right. And that's that's what I got. And now I've seen bits and pieces of Fool for Love and even the film, so I can't say that I'm that familiar with it, but I'm assuming that that's, that's the kind of dialogue that, that exists in this play. It's very realistic and raw and biting, and uh, it's gripping. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's under 90 minutes long, and it just, from the moment it starts, it ropes you in. Yeah, we had the same thing with True West. It could have been done as a, as a two-act, but you, you can't. The continuity is lost. It's just, it's, it's driving. It drives from the beginning well, to the end. It probably just does right too. in the beginning of the script, it says performed in 90 minutes relentlessly. Mm -hmm. You know, not beating you over the head with it, but it has to keep that certain pace because there is silent moments in the show that we've discussed that, you know, there's silence on st stage, but, you know, it's about 80 minutes from beginning till end. It, it, you know, it doesn't stop, but... Um, there's not many people on stage. It's, it's pretty much just Kate and I and, and, a, and two other people that sort of just come in to facilitate us in a way. And that's it. It's just two people. So in order to masterfully write something that could hold an audience with so few characters, I mean, it's, it speaks a lot to his, mm -hmm. his talent. Yeah, not, not easy. Uh, but going back to the genesis, I, I think we, we uh, kind of glossed over the, the actual... Who said what to whom to get you guys all together? Was it Louis approached you or, or I yeah. mean, you said, I know he's wanted to do this for a long time. Yes, I've known Lou for over 20 years and I know he's wanted to do this play. Uh, they had done it here before in this theater and he's always wanted to do it again. Mm -hmm. And then I guess he saw you two guys in Roqueford and went like, maybe that's the magic we need. Yes, he reached out to us and uh, we were both really excited about it. Yeah. And uh, we got together and we said, we need to do this soon right and um so it's been a, a collaborative effort of of finding a space and getting the rights and putting everything together and it's then learning the words learning yeah. the words. it's always the fun it's, part isn't that's it? i feel like that's the easiest part for me <laughs> <laughs> just learning the words everything else well i i, I know from working with, with casey before mm -hmm. uh, and with and other actresses have said this to me and you're probably going to say it to me after this production <laughs> is that you let him have his head and you follow him. And, and he'll, he'll be where he's supposed to be, but he may not always be where you expect him to be. Casey? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think either of us are where we expect well, every each time, other to Every be. time rehearsal is done, it's like, wow, we didn't, we, yeah. we're never in the same place mm -hmm. twice, which is kind of nice, because mm -hmm. if you're with somebody you trust, then... It's much yeah. more organic. Yeah. yeah. And this script, there's, there are a lot of opportunities for physicality uh, in both sensual and semi-violent ways <laughs> so we've been working on <laughs> on on working yeah we've been working on making that interesting and and that changes every night too. No, and it's tough it's tough getting that <laughs> yeah. close to somebody and being in such close quarters and invading each other's personal space because yeah. we look at each other and just laugh and it's like i'm supposed to be struggling with you right now and but yeah. it's it's tough to cross those boundaries mm -hmm. well it's a creative process yeah mm -hmm. i mean it, it, it goes where it's gonna go i i and i find this uh, as opposed to dealing with people who find it an easy time learning words, uh -huh, uh -huh, and those of us who have a more difficult time learning words, but in between the beginning of not knowing the words and finally getting them, that process sometimes works better when, when some people have to make stuff up once in a while. As a director, if people say to me, uh, uh, they paraphrase and directors say, I don't want you to paraphrase and say, no, you have to. That convinces me that you know what the hell's going on. And then it, eventually I end up coming back to being about 90% close to the lines, but through the rehearsal process, it's easier to just sort of mm -hmm. garble it up and then get comfortable with what it actually is. But yeah. it's a bad habit, but it's, well, it, it served me okay. It served me uh, all right. As so long far. as you work with people who can survive it. Right. Well, that's right. really important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you have to have faith in one another. I mean, when you're on stage with people, it's not that... There are people maybe you don't have complete faith in. Uh, it's that's more difficult when you can really throw yourself at the mercy mm -hmm. of someone else, that you rely on each other to that depth. Mm -hmm. It makes the characters much more real, because you're living in the other skins. Yeah, right. and, and that the friendships that and bonds you create are yeah. very strong. Because can you just think like one another? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
always happen. Okay, which one of you is that going to put in jail? <laughs> and it doesn't always happen that you like the person that you're doing these really intimate roles with. Sometimes there's a person that, that you have to get very close with in a show and you're like, oh, I can't find anything that I like about this person. But we've actually become really good friends since well, doing sure. Rogue for it together. So I think that definitely translates on stage and, and it builds a great foundation of trust and collaboration and creativity. Something that I've been working with personally for this part is uh, my character is at a place where she finally has claimed her independence from Eddie. And uh, he arrives in a motel room she ran away to. And uh, it, it's her struggle with, do I want him to stay or do I want him to go? Right, like, do you need me or do you know do that? Do I need you, do I want you? Am I sick mm. of you yet? <laughs> and I enjoy playing with those yeah. sort of aspects mm -hmm. of, you know, being a manipulative sort of man in that respect where it's like, well, of course you need me, and she's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, well, it's fun to play with Well, men manipulate stuff. in different ways. Well, right, you know. no, I, I don't mean what to, do you, mean? you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though. I mean, women, women do, Well, women, you know. women take advantage of men's stupidity and, and arrogance <laughs> and manipulate them. <laughs> okay, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon here. Uh, I just want to say happy Thursday morning to everyone. And, uh, um, not because you may not have anything to do. There may be some things that are just not important enough to do, uh, which would cause you not to come and see this show. I think you're insane if you don't. I think you've got a wonderful cast, you're a good director, and a pretty decent playwright. So uh, it'll be on Friday night at 8 o'clock, Saturday night at 8 o'clock, Sunday at 2 o'clock matinee, here at Providence Playhouse, Actor Circle's home on Providence Road in Scranton. Uh, and if you if you're planning on coming here Sunday and you have nothing to do on Saturday or Friday night, you might try coming over to the uh, cultural center to to catch the uh, new vintage ensembles, mm -hmm. the trouble with sketch comedy. You might see me there. I might even be funny. <laughs> Just get out of the house. That's what <laughs> we're yeah. saying. Do yeah. both. <laughs> so, once again, uh, for Northeast Current and for Casey Thomas and Kate. I want to say thank you very much for what you want me to say your last name, Tim? Kate Priestat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you very much for watching us, and now we're going to go away. Thanks. Thank you. So fun to do. I've never looked at a head of lettuce the same way since. Nope. <laughs> we have like, we have gnats going up our yeah. nose and everything. <laughs> Tom Brooke has nothing on us if he was in a war zone, I'm telling you. Brian Williams. <laughs> Sorry, we, our helicopter was shot down over here. To do with things like this, it's like it's like tasting chocolate chip cookies. Right. Yeah, and this and actually, like, yeah, the bench. Like, like we never really. So you do a wheelie, Owen. <laughs> oh, the FCC would have you after me. Yeah, that was painless. Not my thing. <laughs> you can get blood all over there. I don't care. Well, that was a good chocolate chip cookie. Do you think you're going first? Should I start you think? Hey. Playing cops and robbers. Yeah. The best child chip cookies you ever had.